Hello everyone, I wanted to go ahead and make a video on the kind of the basic features of Atom because I've had several people kind of stumble over some of the um, Atom features. And I think that's just because you're not familiar with the tool. So I figured I'd take a few minutes and make a video going over the basics of Atom and kind of giving you some suggestions for how you might use it to make your life easier. I'm only going to do this for Atom because that's all I have installed on my machine. Um, if you're using VS Code or Sublime, the features are pretty much the same. You, the shortcuts or whatever are the menus to get to them will likely be different, but it, it, it all transfers one to the next to the next. So um, first off, when you first load up Atom, you'll get something that looks like this. You'll see it says Untitled up here, and there's nothing here, and I can't type. I'm trying to type and nothing's happening. That's because Atom is, is basically like Notepad on steroids, where Notepad, when you start it up, it gives you a blank document. Atom does not, because it assumes that you're not trying to just type a random document. You're going to load up something. Now, Generally speaking, the way that you're going to use Atom is you are first going to get your um, folder that you want that you're working in and then stick it inside of Atom as a project folder. So let's go ahead and I'll just pull up my terminal and I'll make a folder on my desktop. So cd to my desktop and make directory um, demo folder. Whatever. So if you don't know the terminal, don't worry about that. All I did was I just made a folder on my desktop. So the step one, generally speaking, is going to be to open that folder. You might have a folder called CS330, or you might have a different folders that you want to kind of import and keep all your work inside. I highly recommend that. That way you kind of keep things contained. But on a Mac, it's Command-Shift-O is to um, open a folder, but you can also go to File, Add Project Folder, and I'm sure on a PC it's probably Control-Shift-O if I had to guess. And you'll get a little pop-up. So let's go to the desktop and find demo folder and open. And this will stick it over here in the side. And what's nice is that anytime you put anything inside of demo folder, it will show up right here. This is super useful as we get to start working on more advanced projects, which have multiple directories and files and whatnot inside of them, to allow us to quickly navigate throughout our entire folder. So inside a demo folder, let's right-click and create a new file. And you can call this file whatever you want. I'll call it index. Dot HTML. Now the dot HTML is important. That's the extension for that file, and if you don't put on an extension, it will just be created as a uh, blank file that doesn't have a file type. And number one, your operating system won't know how to open it, and also Adam won't know what presets to apply to it. So you'll notice, now that I have this index.html, down here in the bottom, it pre-selected HTML for the grammar. I can change that manually if I want to, and you've got all these different things, all these different languages, and there's more that you can add through packages. But by default, it'll just pick the one that goes on the, um, the extension that you chose. So this is why I can do HTML colon 5 and hit tab, and that works fine. But if I change this to, I don't know, C, and I do HTML colon 5 and hit tab, nothing happens. Because Adam is automatically saying, okay, this is a C um, program. This, is going, this file is going to be run in C. So we're obviously not going to use the HTML5 syntax inside of a, a C program. But if I change this back and just make it auto-detect, it'll detect on the extension, and that will start to work again. Oops, it would help if I could type. There we go. So that's um, one of the tricks. If for, for any reason you need to change that, if, you need to, if you're using something else, like a lot of times it'll happen once you get a little bit more advanced into your JavaScript, and if you start using React, in that case you would need to use Babel. Um, Babel ESX JavaScript, so you can, you can change it. And it will change, but um, for this course you shouldn't need to change that. It should automatically detect it, provided that you actually put the extension like you should over there. Um, so we've talked about adding project folders, we've talked about adding um, files. You can also add folders inside of here. If you just right click and hit a new folder, and you just give it a name, my folder. And you can rearrange things inside of here like that, so I just can just drag and drop it into there. So this, this kind of has, it's pretty self-explanatory, the project pane over there. But a cool thing is you have shortcuts. Um, inside a demo folder, I can push the letter A to make a new file. New file.js. And now I have a new file. And I can also hold shift and hit A to make a new folder. So just a, a little bit of shortcuts that you can kind of um, make your life a little bit easier when you're working with Atom. I'm not 100% sure if those same are the same shortcuts in Sublime or VS Code, because I haven't used either of those in a while but I guarantee you they will have some sort of a shortcut that you can use. Next thing I wanted to talk about is themes. By default, Atom has a few themes pre-installed, and that's the theme, just the look of it, but you can add your own. If you happen to like a, your editor to look a certain way, you can. Um, so what, the way that you add themes is you go to Atom and then Preferences. I think this says Settings on Windows, I'm not sure. 
But then you come down to the install tab, just like um, if you've already gotten to the videos where we install Emmet, it's the exact same, except up here you click on themes, and then you can find different themes. A super popular one is Dracula, Dracula UI, see it's got 62,000 downloads, and we can install that. You just click install. Now that it's done installing, we have to just set it, basically. So I come up to the themes, and it says, okay, which one do you want? And I can pick Dracula. It'll take it a second. There we go. Now it's Dracula. So I can switch it back. I like personally like the one dark that comes pre-installed. That's how you can install themes, and there's a ton out there. Feel free to, to look around. I'm going to uninstall this because I don't need it. But there's a ton of themes out there. Um, the next thing is I wanted to show you how you do install packages, which is just like Emmett. You already did this if you've been through that video, but in case you haven't, you come down to the install. Packages will be selected by default, and you just search for the packages that you want. So, for example, Emmett. This number tells you how many people have downloaded this thing. So generally speaking, you can kind of look at this number and it's going to be kind of a representation of how good that package is. Keeping in mind that some of the packages we're not going to need. Like we're not going to need Emmet JSX CSS modules because we're not using JSX. We're not doing anything in React, so we don't need JSX. So just keep that in mind. There are lots of websites out there that'll give you the best Atom packages and the top Atom packages and all that crap. So you're welcome to investigate that and look into that on your own. There are a few that I recommend, especially for this course, that I think would be helpful. These are not at all required, and basically I would suggest trying them, see if you like them. Um, first one is obviously Emmet. That one is almost required because it's just so dang useful. The next one is Atom HTML Preview. Atom HTML Preview. Right here, I noticed it's got 1.4 million downloads, and I already have it installed, but you could install that. And the way that it works is that it lets you preview your HTML inside of Atom, so you don't have to open up a web browser and keep refreshing the page. So let's just add a p tag, test. Let's add, I don't know, an h2. Um, this is an h2, whatever. Save. And then you go to Packages, and you, there's a shortcut for this, but Preview HTML, you can enable it and it shows up right over here. And as I create new things, let's just do a div that says whoop, and it shows up right there. I don't have to sit here and refresh the page over and over again. I can put an unordered list and then put an li of number one and duplicate that a few times and it shows up right over there. So this makes your life a little bit easier because you can see it um, in real time as you update it. I also like the um, ES6 JavaScript. Here it is, 167,000 downloads. I've already got this installed. It's just a whole bunch of different JavaScript snippets that make your life easier. Um, we haven't gotten to JavaScript yet, so I don't expect you to understand most of what this is unless you have a um, background in JavaScript. But it'll make it like you can do a lot of cool things. Like, for example, if I go inside this JavaScript file, because it only works on JavaScript files. I can do AFB tab and it'll give me an arrow function with a body. I can do stuff like CLL tab and it'll give me console.log. It does stuff like that that just makes your life easier as you type things as, as you are as you are writing. There's snippets that autocomplete for you. Um, let's go back to install. I also like highlight selected. Right there I have this installed 2.4 million downloads. All this does is anytime you double click on a word, it will highlight all the rest of the instances of that word in the document. It makes it very easy if you're looking for variables and to make sure they're named the same thing. It just makes it makes your life a bit easier. The next one is Minimap. I already have that installed. That has 6.2 million downloads, and that's what this thing is over here. It keeps it basically kind of like a minimap of all your code, and as you write more things it'll go further and further and further. So if I just kind of duplicate this a bunch of times, you can see the mini-map is also expanding, and I can drag and drag it around. Just kind of gives you a, a, a top-down view of all of your code. There's two more that I recommend, and there, there's more, but these are the kind of the, the ones that I really recommend. Color Picker. Not an Color Picker. For some reason, that comes up first, but you want Color Picker right here, 2.2 million, not the 111,000. That's already installed, and what that allows us to do is to basically just pick hex colors. Um, I don't remember what keyboard shortcut I have set for this. Let's find out again. Command Shift C. So you can customize that, by the way. But if I come in here and let's say I, I, I was in my JavaScript and I needed to get a color, so const color equals, I can do Command Shift C. It'll give me a little pick thing. So I can come through here and let's say I wanted a green color, looks something like that. Just hit Enter and it populates it there for me. 
Also, you'll notice that Atom, by default, will color code your stuff. So you can also select that, Command-Shift-C again, and let's do more of an orange, maybe, and it'll update it to that, and you'll see that in a second Atom will, there it goes, it'll highlight it. And finally, I like File Icons. So let's go back to Install, File Icons. It's this one down here with 8.6 million downloads. What it does is it just adds these little icons next to my file types, just to make it a little bit easier to see them. So if I disable that, you'll see that these just have these kind of blank document things. But if I enable it, now I have, it tells me what kind it is, HTML5, JavaScript, so on and so forth. That is pretty much the very basics of Atom. You can customize all those packages I just showed you. Atom's kind of built on the theory that you can customize it as much as you want. You can even go into the configuration files and add CSS and other things to make it behave and look in a different way than it does right now, and you can customize as much as you want. I personally am perfectly happy with it the way that it is, adding a few packages, but some people like to just go full on and customize the crap out of it. That's entirely up to you. In this video, we talked about several things. We talked about how you can create files and um, set the language of those files, and by default, it will pick the um, based on the file extension, and you always want to have a file extension. We talked about how you can add your project folders over there in the side and how you can create new files and folders from inside of there. And then we talked about themes and packages and how you can install them both. And then I gave you recommendations for a few packages. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.